All right, welcome to Craft D&D. Today we're going to talk about surprise. Now imagine, your party is slowly moving down this narrow cave corridor. Only the magical flickering on the top of the wizard's staff lights the way. The fighter in the lead is peering around the corridor, trying to figure out where that thief has gotten off to. Now, the cleric... In the rear, is looking into the blackness behind with his special vision. But then suddenly from above, there's a shuffle and goblins launch. their stalactite trap from above. They're attempting to impale the wizard and the fighter. It's all right. Combat's about to take place here. With the first step of combat is to determine surprise. Uh, so one of the more confusing parts of combat might actually be surprise, because once you get into it, you kind of get it figured out. But for some reason, you know, by 5th edition, this important monster advantage has been almost removed from the game, and it is kind of a monster advantage. I don't know why they got rid of it, but that's beyond me. But uh, surprise is not all that hard to understand. So let's go ahead and demonstrate how to figure out how to do surprise. So first, surprise is only considered once during combat. And that is right away. Right now, we're going to determine surprise. We're not going to determine it later. We're not going to determine it in the middle or the beginning of every, every initiative. And in this example, surprise only happens as the stalactites fell and that trap was sprung onto the main part of the party. Now, the wizard and the fighter were, were the ones that were targeted. The cleric, he's far enough back that uh, um, they weren't able to two-target him. And, of course, the thief, he's up and around the corner. They let him go by because they were waiting on the main party. They, were, they didn't want the thief. They wanted that magic user. They wanted that fighter. So that thief was not attacked when he went through. Even though they were there, there was probably a chance that the thief could have detected them, but he obviously failed that. So the, deter the DM has determined that, yes, there's a chance for surprise, that the party is going to be surprised, not the monsters. Now, you could say that the cleric might get to act normally no matter what. Or you might say that uh, they're actually going to be included in, in the surprise, because even though they weren't attacked, they're still going to be surprised by the attack. Uh, they might have been too far away to notice, although with those rocks falling, you're not going to notice that. But other surprise scenarios, they might not notice it right away. That's totally DM discretion. So at any rate, you roll 1d6 for the entire party. Go ahead and grab a d6 here. Now, the goblins would not have been surprised at all, of course. They wa they observed the party walking below and launched the attack. Uh, the same, of course, is true if they were in a room that the party was breaking into or otherwise aware of because of the party actions. So, like I was saying, in this example, only the party has a chance of being surprised. Only the party. The monsters are not surprised at all. So the party's going to roll. If they rolled a four, they weren't surprised. However, if they roll a one, then that means they're going to be surprised for one segment during which the monsters continue their actions. Okay? If they roll a two, then they're going to get two segments that the monsters get to continue their actions. Because they're going to be surprised for two segments, not rounds, but segments. And remember, of course, that one segment is one-tenth of a minute or one-tenth of a round. So just six seconds. So they're not surprised for an entire round of combat, just a part of it, either one or two segments. So six or 12 seconds. So what can happen during a surprise segment? Now, Per the DMG, page 61, any action that can take place in combat, step 4, parts A through H, can be done by the side that was not surprised. The monsters in this case could. 
avoid engaging. They could try to parlay. They could wait for an action. They could start firing their arrows or magic weapons. If there was a spellcaster among them, they can start casting a spell that takes one segment, like Magic Missile. They could try to turn on dead. They could close to strike or charge, set weapons against charge, strike blows uh, to kill her or subdue. Uh, they could try grappling. They could try holding. In our example here, the goblins would get one or two additional actions. So, but in that one or two segments, they might start climbing down, they might shut off more stalactites, they might start firing arrows, they might even retreat into small tunnels back here, they might head back this way, because they've launched this gorilla attack, now they're going to move back this way, perhaps even collapsing the tunnel, they have another guard post over here, and they're going to attack again, while the party is over here dealing with this confusion, now, of course, the party could try to climb up. The party could try to go through those new tunnels. And the party could actually obviously take many actions at this point because they're aware of these goblins. And these goblins went somewhere. If they had rolled a three to six, then perhaps the cleric glanced back and yelled a warning. Or the wizard or fighter heard a noise and looked up just in time. But either way, once the prize was resolved, that initiative would just be rolled up like normal and the regular combat rounds would start. So you don't have to do surprise every time. Surprise is just for that initial encounter, that initial contact. Uh, so some party members and monsters can affect surprise, though. So for example, a piercer has a 95% chance of surprising their targets. Had that been a stalactite monster, the piercer, then the DM might just roll a percentile dice and then flip a coin to figure out if it was one or two segments of surprise, because those piercers are almost always going to surprise the party. Other monsters can also change the surprise segments. Not the number of them, but the, the, how often you can be surprised. A bugbear, for example, uh, surprises on a one, two, or three. And a ranger only surprises on a one. So had a ranger been with the party then she would have been surprised on a 1. However, so even if that ranger was with them, um, he was over here, he, he would only have been surprised on a 1, but the wizard and fighter, the cleric, would have been surprised on a 1 or a 2. The bugbear happened to be coming along here and surprises them, then the ranger would actually be surprised on a 1 or 2 as well, because he surprises on a 1, 2, or 3. So the ranger could be surprised on a one or two, but the other party members were all be surprised on a one, two, or three. So it, that his ability only affects him, the ranger, when that bugbear comes along. So if an adventuring party is delving into the unknown reaches of some forgotten dungeon, guess what? They will probably almost never surprise the monsters. Why? Because everything is new and unknown, and they're in the monster's house. Okay, they're expecting anything, but when the piercers start to fall from above, they are going to be surprised. You know, if a ghost suddenly materializes, they're probably going to be surprised. A group of goblins have had this stalactite trap and been hiding in a way to top this shelf. They get the drop on them. They will probably be surprised. Now, being goblins, they someone might kick a rock, or someone might yell, or something. So the monsters, the monsters are aware of the party, perhaps hours ago. That last combat, they may have saw lights. They may have tripped up an alarm trap way back at the entrance. There might have been more to that pit trap than they understood. Maybe stopping the pit trap from going off was the trigger to alarm them that someone was coming in because the pit trap also included a pressure plate. Now, they're only now being attacked because they've entered the goblins' territory. So, whatever the case, under regular circumstances, the party should be surprised much more often than the monsters, especially when we're in the monster's house. Now, if the party is able to somehow conceal themselves conceal their presence with something like invisibility, uh, stealth. Maybe the they didn't even realize the thief went by. 
Maybe they plan their own ambush. I don't know if they're aware. They figure out a way to plan their own ambush and so forth. Then the party can force surprise on the monsters. Now, the emphasis of the course here is the word might. Because they're going to have to figure out a way to do that, not just say, we try to surprise the monsters. So if the party does manage to get the drop on the monsters, then the monsters would roll the d6, that would roll the surprise dice, and be similar to just, you know, the scenario that I just did, just outlined. Uh, they would have that one or two surprise segments. Um, if both sides are surprised, they're both walking down the corridor, and both of them completely unaware of each other, and just bump into each other. They both sides might be surprised, and if so, they can both roll surprise dice. If they both roll higher than a three, then no one's surprised. If one side rolls a one and the other side rolls a two, then they both set out the first segment, and the group that rolled a two gets attacked during the second segment by the group that rolled a one. And of course, all those special attacks and abilities like the piercer and the bugbear and the ranger and many others still apply. I should also mention that um, I've been told that there can be um, only a maximum of two segments of actual surprise. So either one, six seconds or 12 seconds. A one was called a surprise and a two used to be called a complete surprise, apparently in original Dungeons and Dragons. So even though the party was surprised uh, more often, uh, such as the bugbears, three and six chance, the actual number of surprise would not exceed two. So they wouldn't get a surprise for three segments. The bugbear would not get three attacks, just the two attacks. So that's apparently in their original version of the game. That's how it was played. I can't find it mentioned in the Dungeon Master's Guide. It doesn't mean it's not in there. I just don't see it in there. But uh, that's what I've been told anyway. So, But anyway, it's easy enough to ignore surprise. Uh, it's a part of the game. It's a part of the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons for sure. It's a part of, I don't sure when they stopped. But it's an element that is in the, in the monster's favor. It's a tool in your DM toolbox. And something that the monsters would definitely try to take advantage of. They're not going to just run up toe-to-toe -to -toe with these adventures coming in. They're going to figure out a way to do some gorilla-type attacks. They're going to figure out a way to use their traps. So embrace it and use it. All right, don't forget to do the YouTube thing. Like, share, subscribe, bell icon, and all the fun. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.